Um, I wouldn't say it's success. I would just say it's people getting accustomed to a certain new type of music that a lot of people are making and I happen to be part of it and I'm very lucky to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I love playing music for people, I love getting on stage and doing that and it, so it's been really just, I just feel so lucky to be able to do this. Yeah, 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 well I'm still in school so, you know, I still have to write papers and, 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 and get good grades and, and do all that. So I, most of the year I'm just doing that, not, not really touring or doing anything music related, I'm in school studying. Mm -hmm. uh, now I have this new thing where I'm making music after our shows and I just don't sleep and I just make music all night. It works really well. I've made the best music of my life doing it. At the same time that I started making electronic music, I was also playing the piano a lot. And I was improvising a lot with the piano. Um, and I used to improvise with my friend Will, who plays saxophone in my band. And we used to just play kind of this African inspired, you know, African Ethiopian jazz. We used to just do that all the time. Um, I used to also play accordion and, and he would play saxophone. Um, and so when it came, when the time came for me to have a band, when I just felt like it was necessary, I told him, would you want to be part of it? He said, yes. And then I said, you know, who should we bring along? Who, who should play with us? And he had been playing with these two other guys, Dave and Ian, who play guitar and drums, respectively. And we just did a rehearsal. I didn't like it too much the first time, but I told myself, you know, it's all it's a job. It's a, you know, we have to work through it, and it has to get better, and it'll get better. And these are, they're amazing musicians anyway, so we're obviously going to get better. Um, and so we just worked a lot, and now it's now it's kind of where I wanted it to be. It's great, um, but it started off as kind of yeah, this this combination of people that doesn't make much sense for dance music. Like Dave and Ian and Will don't really know much about dance music, you know. Now they know a lot, which is hilarious. I liked it to a certain extent, but also I had this thing where um, you would go to a place and I would have all these memories about this place, but I wouldn't be able to share them with anyone because I was alone, you know? And so now, you know, because for example, I had been in this, I've been in this hotel before and it has a crazy entrance. I don't know if you saw it. It looks like you're going into an airport or something. Um, and when I came alone, yeah, I forgot about it. But then this time, like, I can talk to them and be like, remember that crazy entrance of the, of the hotel? It's little things like this make a big difference, at least for me. The fact that I, now the memories exist in like a collective and not just in my own head. That's great. Apart from that, the music is better, so. I had a period where I was recording a lot. I'm not really into that anymore. Okay. But when I used to do that, then I would just put it in a folder and then it would mix with all the other samples that I use. And now it's just a big kind of sample library of my own stuff and other, other stuff that I find wherever. So in the end, it, it ends up being, um, I don't know what's mine or what's found. But you had the time where you went out and recorded? Yeah, when I was like 16. When I was younger, I was really, I thought that was really cool. I don't really think that anymore. Um, I preferred, you know, being at the piano and doing that. Well, anyways. Um, and why did you involve? Yeah, why did I put those sounds? Well, I guess, you know, it's funny because now it really feels like I'm talking about another me. Because it not, it's not the one who's making music now, but who I was back then. I was trying to kind of really create a little world where you could like look here and look over there. And, like, you know, look around, and, and you had textures that were kind of three-dimensional. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. 
Um, and so I felt like having both the music be textured and kind of live inside a space, whether it's nature or, or a room or, or whatever, I thought that was important for my first album. What he's saying roughly is, um, how can you talk about something without showing the sky and the earth? So this idea of showing this celestial thing and then this earth thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, for some reason this was, is very, for me is very, personally, is very tied to what I was trying to do with the album. There are songs like Cologne, which are for me very celestial very kind of up in the air and, and there's songs like Space is Only Noise that you can see which are just very earth based um, and I wanted to kind of say at the beginning that I'm going to try to go from one to the other and back which is what I tried to do so I just needed to say that at the beginning and that's why I used those voices sadly he only says it in French so I said whatever I'll just put it in French <laughs> I started Clown and Sunset when I was 19, the day of my birthday. And I didn't really have um, any idea what I was doing. I still don't really. But I definitely wasn't ready to start putting all this money into putting vinyl out. Because you just lose money when you make vinyl these days. Um, or you break even. And now that I have kind of a bigger budget for Clown and Sunset, that's kind of why I, now I can just, I, I'm okay with maybe losing some money as long as, you know, the music gets its own physical um, object. But vinyl is not the only thing I'm interested in. I'm, I'm actually creating my own little way of, of releasing music, which the compilation will be in this format. Um, so yeah, I think the physical nature of music is super important. I do, I do collect records. I go, I have actually finally found a record store in Providence that I'm in love with, um, where I go to school. And I go there like once every two weeks and buy a hundred records and then listen to them all for like two weeks and then buy a hundred records again. A little, little crazy. Um, and it's great. I love it. Um, so I do that. I do do that, but um, but I do have, but my no, my special connection, I guess, is more just with music being this kind of tangible, like object thing. That that I really love. I hate CDs. Don't like. I'm never gonna have a CD out in my life, <laughs> ever again. No, it's true. No matter what, no one's gonna force me to have a CD. Um, so I'm kind of trying to create these new ways of like giving music to people. Yeah, I think, I think the genres have, are starting to just be completely irrelevant now. I, I think the more music evolves, the, the least you're going to see these genres. I think it's an antiquated way of thinking about music. Um, I think all the new interesting music today is not, you can't put it into a genre, you know? I just don't think you can do that. Um, and so it's still a way for, you know, um, music stores to sell music and kind of, that's probably the only reason it still exists because musically speaking, it's kind of, who cares? For sure, I mean, I started listening to this type of music in 2007 and it was like, you know, minimal techno was like the thing. And there was very little melody, it was all drumming and kind of druggy atmospheric sounds. Uh, and now you go to any club and there's vocals all the time and there's chord progressions and, and it's slower and it's like, yeah, things have changed. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really see it. I guess I just, 
you know, when I when I make an edit, I don't really make it um, like thinking, oh, I'm gonna make an edit. It's more like I DJ back at school for like, you know, my friends, and we're all there kind of having fun. And then one day I'm like listening to a song, and I say, I should play this. And then I make the edit, and I make it to play it, and I don't make it thinking oh, I'm gonna give it to people or send it over or whatever. Um, and so it's a very personal thing. I think edits, you know, are always start off as like this personal thing. You like this song, you want to put a kick drum on it. You don't necessarily want to do anything to it. You just want to put a kick drum and a bass line so that you can play it in a big speaker and it sounds amazing. That's all you want to do. You don't want to do this creative thing, you know? Um, and so it's funny because a lot of people have this like hate against edits because it's like you don't you didn't do anything. It's like that wasn't really the point. I you just try to like put a little kick drum so you can play it to your friends. I mean that, that's how all my at least my edits start off. Um, and so in the end I think in the end I think edits are really beautiful in the sense that you're just sharing music you love. It's not a it's not a big deal, you know. Um, part of it, for sure. Um, Clown and Sunset also will be, which is music at the core, but it's also art and film and graphic design and, and architecture, and it can be a lot of different things. You know, um, I'm just interested in kind of creating products, whether they are music related or art related or film related. Um, and, you know, hopefully, um, always trying to give something honest to people, whether it's music or not. But I'm, I'm, I mean, but I love making music. I'm obsessed with it. I'm still in love with it. And I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Yeah.